Hi, I'm Neil Marshall. This is Trailers from Hell, and I'm here to talk about Dragon Slayer. Uh, this film was released in 1981. It was made by Disney and released by Paramount. And I remember it caused a stir at the time because it was a very kind of bleak, dark, and sinister tale that people weren't really expecting from Disney. But it's also very notable because it's a kind of a showcase for a technique that um, hadn't been really used before. It had been experimented with on... Uh, the Empire Strikes Back. But this is a technique called go motion. And Phil Tippett had devised it as a way of putting motion blur into stop motion animation. Um, there's a lot of science behind it, not that I all that fully understand. But basically, it involves um, animating before you shoot it. So you shoot, you, you, you do the stop motion animation, which is stored into a computer, which then plays it back live for the camera to shoot. That way, you get fluid motion, you get motion blur. Dragon Slayer is very much uh, a showcase for this technique. And they came very close close to using it on Jurassic Park. And there are, in fact, if you look at the Jurassic Park uh, Blu-ray, there's some test footage that they did of the T-Rex in go motion. And it looks pretty good. Um, it's maybe not quite as fluid as CG, but it, in that sense, it looks more real because it, it is a real object that's moving and, it's, and, and it has that kind of solidity to it. Anyway... Uh, the dragon in Dragon Slayer uh, was done in go motion and is easily one of the best dragons in films ever. So with the possible exception of Conan, Dragon Slayer easily stands out as one of the best of these fantasy films at that time. It was much darker and more mature than anybody had come to expect from Disney and frankly it scared the kids, and rightly so. I remember seeing this in the cinema in my hometown and for years afterwards it kept on being re-released in weird double bills with things like Airplane and The Cannonball Run but it was always the highlight. The Dragon Slayer was written by longtime friends of George Lucas, Hal Barwood and Matthew Robbins, and directed by Barwood. And it's one of the first movies to really deal with kind of magic in a very matter-of-fact way, like it's, it's part of this world as like fire or water is. It also deals with the dragon in, in a very similar way, that the awesomely named Vermithrax pejorative has got to be the greatest screen dragon uh, of all time. The effects on Dragon Slayer and the dragon itself is just absolutely awesome and a screen classic and nobody really has come close to it since. There's been plenty of CG dragons around but nothing as, I don't know, as formidable and kind of realistic and, and design-wise as beautiful as, as the dragon in Dragon Slayer. And, uh, and it's, it's weird, it's, it's, it's portrayed with like a large degree of sympathy, it's not just some monster that's just trying to kill everybody. You know, we're told earlier on that, that the dragon is old and dying and in pain and this is what makes it so kind of bitter and cruel. And it really gives the dragon a sense of character. And this was kind of added to by the performances of the humans in the film, specifically Ralph Richardson as Ulrich. The sorcerer is just pure genius and I'm sure Ian McKellen must have taken a few notes when, before tackling Gandalf. It also stars uh, a very young Peter McNichol who would later go to fame as the Biscuit in Ally McBeal. Go figure. A dragon. Fire and stench, it is evil, pure and simple.